on Wednesday, remember, just to, it's at 10 o'clock, 10 to 12 in the same room. Uh, sorry? Sorry, 10.30. That's true, because 8 to 10 and then 10.30 to 12.30. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, it will be 55 questions, just like the syllabus says. It's worth 55 points. Uh, it's a straightforward mathematical calculation, even for me. Okay. One point, one question. Mm -hmm. Uh, there'll be uh, 10 uh, true and false and 45 regular type A, B, C, D, E style and I'm stressing that simply to tell you that the, the time should not be an issue. Now there will be a lot of calculations but there's not going to be any question that you're not expected to be able to answer. Uh, and I'll try my best to put them in the order that we discussed them uh, so that in, I mean in fact, all sorts of research has suggested that uh, <coughs> students do better when they are presented with the material in the same way that they are, have been studied. But anyway, so uh, chapter two material will be first and so on, as much as possible and within reason. Uh, so anyway, uh, from two, so what I'll do in this uh, limited time, relatively limited time that we have, I'll focus on most of the important problems. And, but please note that it's not going to be an exhaustive list. So not everything I go over today, uh, or some stuff that I may not have had a chance to go over, you're still responsible for the material that I posted. But I'm going to uh, try to work out some of the most important problems uh, with you. And with, uh, starting with Mendelian inheritance, with Mendelian inheritance, there will be some definitions. Uh, for example, what is a pure breeder? What's the difference between Mendel's first law and second law? Uh, what is dominance? Um, um, so uh, the problems would be uh, if you are given, let's say, this, uh, this organism, right? How many gametes would that person produce or that organism produce? And the idea is that the number of gametes is given by 2 to the power little n, where n is the number of heterozygous gene pairs. So for that, it's going to be 2 squared, which is 4. Right? Now I might ask you, list them all. Or which one of these is not going to be a gamete? So to list them, remember, just go in, in series. These two can only give you a big C and a little d. There's no other uh, gamete that they can give you. So what are your choices? A with big, A with small, small with big, small with small. These are your four gametes. So that would be, let's say, part one of the question. Part two could be, if you are to cross these together, You're crossing this with this one. I mean, some of the, hopefully you do remember how to do this. Uh, uh, if you are to cross this one with this one, what do you have to be told as well before you can do anything? First of all, you have to be told whether if gene A dominates to little a, but also you have to be told what? Exactly, where the genes are. Are the genes linked or not? And then for this style of questioning, you're most likely gonna be given Yes, they are independently assorting in order for you to treat them as separate uh, genes. I mean, sorry, separate uh, crosses. So uh, if the question is this, this guy times this guy, what's the probability of getting... Uh, there, let's do a simpler one first and then we'll... Uh, what's the probability of getting one that is dominant for all four traits? What's the probability if you do this cross to get one organism that is dominant all over? So what are you looking for? You're looking for A what? Wild, B, C, and D wild. What's the probability of A wild if you have this cross? It's right. So typical monohybrid cross, three out of four times B wild is also three out of four, right? C wild is one out of one, and D wild is one out of one. So it's going to be nine sixty. If the question was, how many different genotypes can be produced from this cross? Uh, who's this? Can you, uh, can I move it? I'm afraid that I'm... <laughs> uh, how many different genotypes can come out of this cross? Uh, a common mistake is for you to force a formula onto this one which doesn't want it. 
right? Don't force 2 to the n and 3 to the n on these because you can only use these if what? If you have parents that are identical. That's the number one rule. These parents are not identical. You cannot use 3 to the n and 2 to the n. What you can use is the formula or the method that gave you 2 to the n, 3 to the n. What formula gave you 3 to the n? How did 3 to, it's again, it's not like someone decided one day, you know, 3 to the n looks good. Let me stick it here. How did they derive 3 to the n? What is 3 to the n? It's, sorry? I'm sorry, I thought you said something. How do you derive 3 to the n? 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, n times, right? So what is that rule? The end rule, exactly. So that's what I'm going to do here. Nothing has changed. I'm going to take A and little A. If I do this cross, how many genotypes do I get? Three. Right? Why? Because big A, big A, big A, little, little, little. If I do the Bs, I'm going to get three. If I do the Cs, how many? Two. Big, 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 small. If I do the Ds, one. Now what do I do? I multiply. Why was it 3 to the n? Because in 3 to the n, you have c little c times itself and d little d times itself. So it's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Only now it's different. 2 and 1 are going to be, have to factor, I mean, are going to have to be factored in. If the question was different, if the question was, uh, instead of being uh, completely dominant, you're given incomplete dominance, you would still work it out the same way. Only now is incomplete dominance, what, what will you get? Would genotypes matter in incomplete dominance? Let me rephrase the question. <coughs> you still have one gene that's segregating two alleles, right? One gene segregating two alleles. And you have incomplete dominance. You're comparing it to complete dominance. The number of genotypes will differ. Is the number of genotypes in incomplete dominance different than the number of genotypes in complete dominance? No. Genotypes, it's absolutely not. You're still going to get big A, big A. You're still going to get big A, little, and little, little. What's going to be different? The phenotypes, because now you get three phenotypes. You get big, big to be one different, big, small to be a totally different, small, small to be a totally, totally different one. So my point here is that the independent rule of probability will apply no matter what, as long as you have independent assortment. So it doesn't matter whether you have complete, incomplete, co, all of them are the same way. 